I'm Matthew Dallitz from the Science of Psychotherapy. Here's a quick snippet from our podcast. This is me talking with Richard Hill about neural networks and curiosity. You've defined um, a network of brain regions um, that have a lot to do with curiosity. And I'm just wondering if you could just give us a very brief sort of outline of what that is about. Well, a quick one there, yeah. So mm. the, I call them, I, I, I isolated them out. It, it's very um, uh, similar to some other work that has, has been done on what's called the reticulum. Uh, but they, they've got a different perspective. Mine's on... What is the thing? My 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 plan was: what is the uh, the thing that will generate the best neurobiochemical framework right. uh, inside uh, a human mind? Because uh, we always talk about these chemical balances. I'm not sort of into the chemical balances so much as right. I'm into the idea that we are given this insight into. Uh, uh, what is best for us. And what is best for us is to be uh, curious, which means we're moving forward towards something, which that means we're reducing our, uh, our distress and our, our fearfulness. So we're calming the amygdala. It means that we're focusing our attention, not focusing like a problem, but focusing uh, in, in, in a peripheral form as we're picking up. It means we're also got an active and, uh, and invigorated prefrontal cortex for regulation and for thinking and it also means we're getting little bits of reward and getting a little bit of pleasure this is good i'm liking it so we're getting that nascent possibility okay. uh, coming through yeah the ideal these, state of mind yeah an ideal state of mind and mm. although we won't be able to see it but it's nice go, go to the book because there's this really nifty diagram where i show yep. how curiosity stimulates a whole bunch of of our neurotransmitter, the creating elements, the Rafe nuclei, the uh, locus, Rafe nuclei for serotonin, the nucleus accumbens uh, for uh, for dopamine, the uh, uh, locus corellius for acetylcholine and norepinephrine, uh, and various other uh, aspects. And when you're curious, as different from happy, where you get some of them, mm -hmm. and pleasure, you get some of them, uh, mindfulness, you get some of them, and curiosity you get the whole gamut coming out and giving you the possibility of greater balance. And if you say to somebody, let's look at your depression, let's look at the things that are making you depressed, mm -hmm. I don't know, that's starting to make me anxious. But wow, I wonder about all the things that are to do with your depression. I wonder if there are things about, let's put one of them out here or one of them, or let's write it on a board or let's pick a, uh, a, a book or let's pick, pick something out of the, 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 the bookshelf or the sand tray. Mm, so do, That's uh, so fascinating. Yeah. Wow, you're depressed. Right. Okay, what can we create with this? Yeah. Where can we go? Such a, it's a, such a subtle shift and, yeah. and but it's, it's still you're focused on the thing that they're concerned about. You're still focusing on the problem, but it, you're coming at it from a different angle. And what you're saying is that you're you're deliberately then lighting up this particular uh, constellation of brain regions, yeah. which is. Now, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't done the direct research. You know, send me lots of money and I'll do it. But <laughs> okay. there is a lot of corroborative uh, individual pieces of research that show that show that when you get this sort of stimulation that you get uh, that you get that and then other ones saying that curiosity gives this sort of stimulation so there's lots of reasonable um, joining the dots right, uh, that, right. that I've done rather than sort of drawing drawing large bows and this is just a fascinating thing that when you get interested just think anything when you've got a kid who's who's bored hmm. How do you get them interested? Say, when you've got a kid who's distressed, look, over there, squirrel. I mean, even distraction uh, stimulates curiosity. Oh, what's that? Um, when you're wondering how to solve a problem, say, I wonder if there's another way to look at it. Uh, De Bono did it with, he did yeah. it with the six hats. He said divide it up into six areas and approach it from different yeah. others, uh, avenues. He did the um, uh, lateral thinking where he said, go to a dictionary, open a book, Put your finger in and think about your problem from the point of view of a gumboot or whatever it is. Yeah. 
and which is metaphor therapy in many other respects yeah, uh, yeah. that we use. If you look at all our therapies, they are explorations and understandings of individual elements of human possibility. The only trouble is instead of putting them all back into being, I wonder which one of these therapies will be the appropriate one at this moment for this client, mm. we isolate them and say, no, this is right, this is good, this is what this client needs. And suddenly the client is again externalized from their own central experience. Okay. Yeah. And that's a big problem in modern therapy. Well, if you want to know more about the science of psychotherapy, come across to our website, thescienceofpsychotherapy.com, and our podcast of the same name, and learn more about the science of you. Thank you.